This video is about mycorrhizae. If you do any chemical applications or if you've gone to garden centers to buy supplements, chances are you've run into products that contain mycorrhizal fungus. So we'll talk about what it is, how you use it, and what are some of the limitations. Mycorrhiza or mycorrhizae plural specifically refers to the relationship that forms between a specific type of fungus and a plant. Those fungi are considered mycorrhizal fungi and there's a couple of groups of them. The first type of mycorrhizae is ectomycorrhizae, meaning in the exterior. These fungi tap into the root, but they don't enter the individual cells. Some famous examples, truffles and morels. And these species will be visible on the plant root. They form a little bit of a, a covering or a sheath, and you end up with very characteristic short, stubby white roots that form a little bit of a Y. The second group is the endomycorrhizal group. These do tap directly into root cells and you won't see a change in the appearance of the root itself. This type is also called vesicular arbuscular mycorrhizae, which refers to two specific structures that the fungus forms inside the plant root cells. Now, what's the benefit to a plant to have mycorrhizae? There's mycorrhizal fungi everywhere, and in nature, these associations form very naturally. The fungus expands the surface area of the tree's root system by as much as 10%, and it extends it further into the soil, into smaller crevices where the roots would never be able to reach. By doing that, it helps a plant get more water and more nutrients, especially certain nutrients like phosphorus, which may not be very soluble in the soil. They may also protect the plant from excess salts and metals in the soil, and they can offer some biological protection as well. For example, they can outcompete other fungi that may be more like pathogens, and they can secrete antibiotics, which will protect the tree from bacteria. So these benefits are real. They occur in nature and in experimental studies, but a lot of these research studies are limited to agriculture, reforestation, reclaiming damaged lands, and just within the laboratory. So the results are not necessarily applicable to landscape because the conditions are different. There's a lot of diversity in both environments and plant species. So you have to take these claims with a grain of salt. What the fungus gets in exchange is food in the form of carbohydrates like sugars. And this is helpful for the fungus because it no longer needs to compete with other organisms in the soil for whatever organic matter is in there. It just gets it directly from the source. So if this is so great, why wouldn't a plant just form this relationship with just about any mycorrhizal fungus? The reason is that it's very expensive. If you think about all the sugars and carbohydrates that a tree will make through photosynthesis, it will need to give up up to 30% of that to set up one of these relationships. Because it's expensive, it really only makes sense for plants to have mycorrhizae if there's some stress in their environment that limits them from getting as many resources as they need. In an established, mature landscape where you have plenty of water from irrigation and you have regular fertilizer or you have mulch, that tree can probably get everything it needs without the fungus. And under those conditions, even if you have the fungus in the soil, this relationship isn't going to start. And that's something to keep in mind in terms of application. So moving on to application. Mycorrhizal fungi are one of the supplements that are often added to plant health care programs. If you're adding a product that's commercially available, those products will have fungal species that are widespread and generalist, meaning that they can associate with a lot of different species. Mycorrhizae really works best when you have a specific relationship, so a specific fungus with a specific tree species. So the likelihood that they would take is a little bit lower when you just apply a general product. 
there are some issues with using commercial products in a suburban slash urban landscape. One, you need to know how old is this product and was it stored properly? If it was stored improperly, you might not have anything alive left in it and you're just applying dead things to the soil. Ideally, you also want specific species for that tree. So if you're applying a generalist species, maybe they won't form a relationship at all. If growing conditions are good, meaning the tree doesn't actually need to form this association, they simply won't. And lastly, if you use a product with mycorrhizae in combination with other methods like fertilizing water, aerating the soil, the benefits from those methods will likely outweigh what the fungus can do and they may actually prevent the mycorrhizae from forming. In summary, although the products can technically do everything they claim, there is a strong chance that the mycorrhizae will not form if you're applying it to an established woody landscape. If you have a struggling tree, focus on aerating the soil, putting down mulch, giving it a lot more water, fixing any targeted nutrient deficiency or toxicity issues before you settle for a product like mycorrhizal fungus. Otherwise, the most likely outcome is that nothing will happen and you'll have wasted the client's money. However, there are situations where using mycorrhizal fungi is appropriate specifically where the soil has been stripped and beat to death. Just think mining operations that have taken all the possible organic matter and topsoil away from an area. It's still best to use local fungus, so if you can, bring in topsoil from surrounding areas and introduce it to the site. You can also get fungus isolated from the, the local topsoil, grow it in a lab, and then create solutions where you're just dipping the new plants into that before they get planted. Or you can also use commercial products, but the same limitations apply. Make sure that it's fresh and has been stored properly so that the fungus inside will still be alive.